And I think the PRC leadership understands quite well that Chinese companies are not necessarily comporting themselves uh, in ways that Beijing would, would prefer. Uh, for example, uh, in his next breath after uh, declaring unconscionable the killing of Chinese workers in Ethiopia, again, uh, Minister of Commerce Wu Xilai excoriated Chinese companies by saying, corporations, Chinese corporations operating abroad must respect local laws and regulations. They must be fulfill necessary social responsibilities and that the government, meaning the Chinese government, must instruct firms working on overseas projects to be aware of their social responsibilities, to respect the public welfare, fit in with the local culture, and protect the local environment. When the Minister of Finance says those things publicly in a newspaper, the People's Daily, which is the flagship uh, mouthpiece of the Chinese Communist Party, the odds are those concerns are not the exception. They are probably the norm. So uh, I've gone on way too long by now, but by way of wrapping up, I would merely restate what I started with, to which uh, China's overseas footprint is stressing the government's ability to manage, support, and coordinate all of the objectives and activities of all the PRC actors who are now players in Chinese foreign affairs. And this especially includes the state-owned enterprises. And in many ways, China's search for energy abroad could serve as the case study for why China, one, will stay overseas, if not increase its overseas footprint, why China has a lot of perception management issues at stake as it goes out for oil around the world, why Beijing must become better at coordinating its foreign policies amongst its own ministries at home, and why the Chinese military may now actually be pondering issues beyond Taiwan when it considers its future roles and missions. And uh, thanks, thanks so much for your attention. Well, holy moly, I don't know quite what to say, but the speakers actually addressed the topic. Um, I was going to talk about something totally irrelevant, but I guess I have to address the topic too, um, very briefly so we can leave some time for uh, interaction, dialogue, and, and, and questions. Uh, I just note that uh, uh, I agree completely with uh, uh, Colonel Finkelstein's uh, observation that China's interests have now become global. Um, <clears throat> that matches the Chinese vision. One thing Henry Kissinger loved about the Chinese in the 70s uh, was that this was the only place on the planet that he could visit and talk about a problem anywhere else on the globe and the Chinese would be well informed and have a viewpoint and it would generally make sense. Um, <clears throat> Some of, us, some of us thought that uh, this exchange of what we call globaloni uh, between the two uh, sides uh, didn't amount to too much, uh, but it's important now because China does have increasing interests uh, around the globe. Um, I'd also like to underscore the fact uh, that it's not just oil uh, and gas that is driving the Chinese involvement with the world. Um, if you go to Paris these days in the Galerie Lafayette, which is a big department store, you will find an entire section with uh, signage in Chinese to and concierge who speak Chinese to help the 300,000 Chinese tourists a year to go there to buy other precious liquids, namely brandy, cognac, and uh, perfume. Um, so things are going on. Outside, we of course don't give visas to foreigners anymore, so uh, we don't observe this here. Uh, but you can uh, you can see this uh, everywhere else, and and uh, what is driving this is uh, growth in the Chinese market. China now uh, produces 46% uh, of the world's steel, one country, 44% of the world's cement. China is investing 9% of its GDP in infrastructure. Uh, we are investing less than nine-tenths of a percent, and it shows. That's why bridges are falling down and highways are full of potholes. Um, the Chinese in the last 17 years since they built the first expressway have put in over 30,000 miles of superhighway. Uh, clearly, the automobile is going to be a factor, and, and that underscores uh, uh, Bob Eagle's point uh, about uh, the, the uh, the future. I might add that that 9% figure does not include Chinese investment in infrastructure overseas to extract the iron ore and the other resources that are required now to drive the Chinese economy, which is very dependent on import 
force uh, across uh, across the board. Um, and I uh, here I want to make a, a point which underscores uh, some of the points that uh, both speakers meant, uh, made about uh, the Chinese corporate structure. Um, China is the least concentrated <coughs> industrial economy on the planet. It is not a few large state enterprises doing things. Uh, in the United States, there are something like 120 large furniture manufacturers who dominate our market. In China, there are 50,000. When the Chinese government banned logging, the immediate result, I just saw it, I was in Bangalore in South India and I, uh, a couple of weeks ago, and there are Chinese there paying to knock down old houses to take out the old wood uh, to build fake antiques uh, for rich Chinese. Um, and, um, and, 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 and others. And um, the, uh, uh, in the oil sector, too, uh, these companies uh, behave uh, very much um, like, uh, like independent companies. They're listed on stock exchanges. Like anyone who's listed on the stock exchange, they're concerned about shareholder value. That's what they talk about in their board meetings. And what determines shareholder value is the value of the reserves you list. There's your equity go up. Um, you can't book a long-term supply contract under the gap, which unfortunately the Chinese have chosen to follow. Uh, so our generally accepted accounting principles. Uh, these oil companies are, added, are, are audited by Pricewaterhouse and Deloitte and others. Um, so they're operating in an environment which is, um, is obsessed with doing what oil companies do everywhere. And um, interestingly, just to buttress one of uh, uh, Dave Finkelstein's points, uh, uh, these companies are now holding seminars because they're concerned about possible nationalization of their assets overseas. You know, what if the communists come? Uh, you know, uh, so um, there are certain ironies here which don't seem to uh, be particularly uh, noticed by them. Um, these companies are evolving in the same way that our great oil companies, the oil and gas companies, have evolved. They're becoming com comprehensive, vertically and horizontally integrated. Uh, I just learned, for example, CNOC, the Chinese National Offshore Oil Company, uh, it tends to become the largest producer of wind power in China over the next five years. Um, why not? They have the seabed access, and there's a 20% uh, uh, increase in wind power over ocean areas than on the land, and they're going to put in, I don't even want to cite the figure because it is so horrendously large, um, a huge number of uh, wind turbines, and I was joking before we came in here that if there's a war in the Taiwan Strait, uh, the U.S. Navy will get chopped up by wind turbines. <laughs> um, but uh, at any rate, um, um, all this is going on. But despite uh, the fact that oil is only about 15% of the Chinese uh, energy menu, relatively low, um, about a fourth of what it is in our economy, um, oil imports are, are growing rapidly and are going to continue to grow. They'll probably double over the coming decade, um, partly because the Chinese government doesn't have the capacity to uh, control what's going on. Um, and here we have to remember that if you look at the United States economy, um, about a third of our GDP, this is before George Bush and big government coming back in, um, the, about a third of our GDP uh, is accounted for by government, um, government revenue or government spending, whichever you prefer to measure. And um, in our country, interestingly, it's two-thirds federal and one-third state and local. We think we're a very decentralized system, but we're actually two-thirds central and one-third state and local. In China, 10 years ago, 1997, the figure here was 32.8% in that year overall. In China, the figure was 10.8%. That is, the government was about a third the size of our total government apparatus. That shouldn't surprise because they don't have social security, they don't have medical care, they don't have any sort of social services. But the interesting thing was that 10.8% split, 2.4% for the central government, 